One minute ago, the Clear Lake volcanic field looked tranquil. A vast lake, gentle valleys, sweeping forests just 89 miles north of San Francisco. But beneath this calm is one of America's highest threat volcanic systems, ranked number 33 by the USGS, dominating 300 square miles with hidden domes and lava flows. Mount Konokti towers nearly 5,000 feet above the water, a silent witness to forces that once reshaped this land. How did this beautiful landscape earn such a dangerous reputation? And what signs suggest the threat isn't over? Let's unravel the truth behind Clear Lake's sleeping volcano. Clear Lake rests quietly in the heart of Northern California, its waters stretching nearly 67 square miles, making it the state's largest natural freshwater lake. Just beyond the shoreline, gentle hills and forested valleys roll outward, giving little hint of the restless forces beneath. This region, about 89 miles north of San Francisco, is shaped not by a single volcanic mountain, but by an entire field, a complex patchwork of volcanic domes, cones, and ancient lava flows that covers roughly 300 square miles of Lake County. Unlike the classic image of a lone, towering volcano, the Clear Lake volcanic field spreads its features across the landscape. Some vents rise as rounded domes, others as low cinder cones, while broad tough rings and explosion craters, called Mars, dot the southern and western shores. Each formation tells a story of past eruptions, where magma met water or burst through the earth, leaving behind a new shape on the land. The field's boundaries extend well beyond the lake itself, reaching into valleys, forests, and even under busy highways. What looks like ordinary countryside is, in fact, the surface expression of a much larger volcanic system. The volcanic field's reach is easy to overlook. Homes, ranches, and small towns are scattered across this region, with roads weaving through what appear to be peaceful hills. But beneath these familiar scenes lies a hidden architecture. Overlapping layers of cooled lava, ash, and volcanic debris, some visible as rocky outcrops, others buried beneath soil and trees. The field's many vents are not lined up in a neat row. Instead, they trace irregular patterns shaped by ancient faults and shifting ground, with clusters near the lake's southern edge and others spaced miles apart. Some domes rise steeply, their flanks covered in dense oak and pine, while others have eroded into gentle slopes that blend into the landscape. Clear Lake itself owes its shape and depth to this volcanic heritage. Past eruptions dammed valleys, redirected streams, and left behind basins that gradually filled with water. The lake's calm surface today reflects a long history of geologic change, each layer of sediment recording a moment when fire and water collided. Even now, the field's true extent can be traced in the subtle undulations of the land, the scattered presence of hot springs, and the mineral-rich soils that support vineyards and orchards. The scale of the Clear Lake volcanic field means that risk is not confined to a single peak or obvious crater. Instead, the potential for future volcanic activity is woven across a broad area, one that includes communities, infrastructure, and natural resources. This dispersed architecture is both the source of the region's beauty and the reason why scientists keep a close watch on the ground beneath Lake County. Mount Konokti rises above the southern edge of Clear Lake, its slopes covered in oak and pine, its summit often hidden by clouds. At nearly 5,000 feet, it stands as the most imposing feature in the region, a silent reminder of the volcanic forces that shaped this landscape. While the mountain's profile dominates the lake's horizon, its presence is more than just scenic. Mount Konokti is a massive lava dome built up by eruptions that pushed thick, sticky magma to the surface thousands of years ago. Its broad shoulders and steep upper flanks are the product of repeated pulses of molten rock, each one cooling slowly into the fractured, blocky terrain visible today. But Mount Konokti is only the most visible part of a much larger system. Scientists look beyond its silhouette 
to assess the true danger posed by the entire volcanic field. The United States Geological Survey has developed a national threat ranking for volcanoes, weighing two factors, the likelihood of future eruptions and the potential impact on people and infrastructure. This formula, hazard multiplied by exposure, places Clear Lake's volcanic field at number 33 on the USGS list in the high threat category. The hazard side of the equation starts with the field's active geologic setting. The region still has a hot, partially molten magma system beneath the surface, capable of producing both explosive eruptions and slow-moving lava flows. The style and energy of past eruptions, the presence of persistent geothermal heat, and the variety of vent types all contribute to a higher hazard score. Scientists factor in the field's history of fretomagmatic blasts, where magma met water to produce violent explosions, as well as the evidence for future unrest in the form of ongoing seismic activity and gas emissions. Exposure, the other half of the threat score, is shaped by the communities, roads, and infrastructure that now occupy the volcanic zone. The calculation takes into account not just permanent residents, but also visitors to parks, travelers on highways, and the presence of schools, hospitals, and power lines. The threat score doesn't hinge on a single catastrophic scenario. Instead, it reflects the ways even a modest eruption could disrupt daily life, damage property, or threaten public safety. Mount Konokti's dramatic form draws the eye, but the real measure of risk comes from this broader analysis, a landscape-wide assessment that blends geology with human geography. The field's high threat status is not just a technical label. It's a recognition that beneath the familiar hills and quiet lake, the forces that built Mount Konokti remain active, and the stakes for the region go far beyond the mountain's shadow. The surface calm of Clear Lake belies the restless energy beneath. The last eruption here took place approximately 11,000 years ago, but geologists are clear. Dormancy is not extinction. Beneath Lake County, a vast chamber of partially molten rock, estimated at 240 to 275 cubic kilometers, remains active, its heat rising through faults and fractures. In some places, hot rock lies just a thousand meters below ground, fueling the region's famous hot springs and powering the geyser's geothermal field. This hidden engine is not a relic of the distant past. It is a living system, its presence confirmed by decades of seismic imaging, gravity surveys, and the steady output of geothermal wells. The California Volcano Observatory, known as CalVO, keeps constant watch over this sleeping giant. Their network of sensors tracks every tremor, every subtle ground shift, every whiff of volcanic gas. Seismometers pick up earthquake swarms and faint tremors, tiny slips that might signal magma movement. GPS and satellite radar measure ground deformation, watching for uplift or subsidence that could hint at changes below. Gas monitoring stations sample the air for carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, both telltale signs of magma degassing. Each data stream is checked daily, with scientists alert for any pattern that breaks from the ordinary. So far, the signals remain steady. No sudden swarms, no rapid ground inflation, no spikes in volcanic gases. The field is quiet, but not silent. The monitoring effort draws on the lessons of the past, when eruptions came after long intervals of calm. Between 60,000 and 10,000 years ago, the field produced eruptions every 1,800 years on average. By that measure, the current pause is not unusual on a geological timescale. As one USGS scientist put it, from a geologic standpoint, 10,000 years is not very old. That raises our eyebrows as volcanologists that something might happen here in the future, the distant future. We don't really know. For the scientists at Calvio, uncertainty is not a reason for inaction. Their work is grounded in the understanding that volcanic systems can awaken with little warning, sometimes after thousands of years of apparent sleep. The tools they use, seismology, satellite imaging, gas chemistry, are designed to catch the earliest signs of unrest. 
Yet even with today's technology, some changes can be subtle or masked by natural background noise. Small intrusions of magma, deep below the surface, might escape notice until they trigger more obvious signals. That is why the observatory's vigilance never lapses. The story of Clear Lake's volcanic field is written in layers of ash, lava, and sediment, but also in the data streams feeding into Calvio's offices. Each day without incident is not a guarantee of future peace, but a reminder of the need for informed vigilance. The presence of melt beneath the surface, the record of past eruptions, and the tools of modern monitoring all point to the same reality. This is a living system, and its story is far from over. Deep beneath the tranquil waters and wooded slopes of Clear Lake, the evidence for past volcanic violence lies hidden in layers of mud and ash. Geologists have spent decades probing these secrets, extracting long, slender cores from the lake bed and sifting through beds of tephra, volcanic ash, preserved in the sediment. Each distinct layer tells of an eruption, its chemistry, its reach, and its style. By matching the chemical fingerprints of ash in these cores to deposits on land, researchers have reconstructed a record of explosive events stretching back nearly 14,000 years. The most recent of these eruptions, dated by radiocarbon, to between 13,250 and 8,500 years ago, left behind more than just scars on the landscape. They shaped the very contours of the southern lakeshore, especially near Kelseyville, where clusters of broad, low-rimmed craters, Mars, mark the sites of ancient blasts. When rising magma met shallow groundwater beneath the lakeshore, the result was a fritomagmatic explosion. These were not gentle events. Columns of steam, ash, and shattered rock rocketed skyward, while ground-hugging surges of superheated gas and debris, pyroclastic density currents, swept outward, stripping vegetation and scouring the land. In the immediate vicinity of the vent, Blocks and bombs the size of suitcases rain down, some landing hundreds of meters from their source. Ash clouds drifted across the lake, settling in thick beds that now form distinct layers in the sediment cores. Some craters breach the edge of the lake itself, flooding with water and leaving behind new embayments or small lakes that remain visible today. The physical traces of these eruptions are catalogued with forensic precision. Outcrop logs and lake core stratigraphy reveal repeated sequences, beds of fine ash, cross-bedded surge deposits, and layers of coarse, accidental clasts, rock torn from the earth by the force of the blast. Geochemical analysis ties each tephra layer to a specific eruption, confirming not only the timing, but the style of each event. Some surges left behind massive, poorly sorted tuff, while others deposited well-bedded layers that thin rapidly away from the vent. Ballistic fields, marked by armored lapilli, and clusters of volcanic bombs are mapped within a few hundred meters of the ancient craters. These eruptions set the template for the hazards Clear Lake could face again. Scientists group the dangers into five main categories, each grounded in the physical record. Pyroclastic density currents, fast, hot flows that can obliterate anything in their path, lava flows, slow but relentless, capable of burning and burying structures near the vent. Ballistic blocks and bombs, projectiles that can travel miles, smashing roofs and injuring or killing anyone in their path, ashfall, fine particles that can blanket communities, foul water supplies, and disrupt transportation, and lahars, volcanic mudflows that surge down valleys, burying roads, and flooding low-lying areas. Every hazard type has left its mark in the geologic record, Pyroclastic surges laid down thick beds near Maya rims. Ballistic bombs are found embedded in ancient soils. Ash layers, sometimes up to a meter thick within a kilometer of vents, taper off to thin traces miles away. Even where no large-scale lahars have been documented from Holocene eruptions, the potential remains, especially if future blasts coincide with heavy rains or snowmelt. Each hazard, mapped and measured, is a reminder that the volcanic field's quiet surface is no guarantee of safety. The physical proof, preserved in ash, rock, and crater, speaks to the range of threats that could one day return. Pyroclastic density currents, searing avalanches of gas, ash, and debris, can race down the slopes at speeds topping 60 miles per hour with temperatures above 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing in their path survives. 
Ballistic blocks, some weighing hundreds of pounds, have been found over six miles from ancient vents, landing with enough force to crush vehicles or punch through roofs. Lava flows, though slower, reach temperatures up to 2,000 degrees, igniting everything they touch and burying roads, homes, and farmland. Laha mud flows, triggered by rain on fresh ash or sudden snowmelt, can sweep through valleys at highway speed, engulfing bridges and flooding entire neighborhoods. These numbers are not just statistics, they map directly onto daily life in Lake County. Over 17,000 people live inside the volcanic field. The Big Valley Band of Pomo Indians Rancheria sits squarely within the hazard zone, where tribal leaders remember stories of fire and falling stones. Each year, Clear Lake State Park draws more than 70,000 visitors, many unaware of the ground's hidden volatility. More than 25 million vehicle trips cross the field annually, with major highways, schools, hospitals, and power lines threading through potential impact zones. For residents, travelers, and visitors alike, these hazards are not distant abstractions. They are mapped onto homes, routes, and gathering places. The scale of risk is measured not just in geologic force, but in the lives, histories, and futures that intersect this restless ground. Steam rises from the wooded hills between Clear Lake and the coast, proof that volcanic heat is still hard at work beneath the ground. The geysers geothermal field, stretching across approximately 30 square miles, stands as the largest power-producing complex of its kind in the world. 18 operational plants draw energy from wells bored thousands of feet into the earth, tapping a reservoir of superheated steam. This system delivers up to 2,000 megawatts of electricity, enough to power homes and businesses across the North Bay and beyond. The lights in San Francisco, Santa Rosa, and towns all the way to the Oregon border are partly fueled by the living magma chamber below Lake County. For the engineers and scientists who run the geysers, the volcanic field's heat is both a resource and a reminder. As one plant manager puts it, we're harnessing energy from a system that's still alive. Every megawatt is a signal that the magma is real, not just a theory. Local emergency planners take the lesson further. They point to the same underground force and ask, what if it changes? Their approach blends calm readiness with practical steps. Households are encouraged to keep go bags with N95 masks, radios, and water. Community drills run through evacuation routes with special attention to schools, hospitals, and tribal lands. Siren systems and text alert networks have been upgraded and mutual aid agreements ensure that first responders can act fast if anything shifts. The message is clear. While the risk of eruption remains low in the short term, the presence of heat and magma means planning is not optional. Preparedness is woven into daily life, from the power grid to the family pantry. The Clear Lake volcanic field sits just 89 miles north of San Francisco, covering more than 300 square miles with a complex system of domes, cones, and craters. Despite its calm surface and a last eruption dating back approximately 11,000 years, scientific surveys confirm a persistent active magma system beneath the region. The USGS ranks Clear Lake at number 33 on its National Volcanic Threat List based on both its geologic potential and the exposure of more than 17,000 residents, tribal communities, state park visitors, and key infrastructure. Past eruptions left physical evidence, craters in lake sediments, and explosive ash layers, while the region's continued geothermal power production at the geysers proves ongoing underground heat. Experts agree there are no signals of imminent eruption, but acknowledge that the exact timing of future activity cannot be predicted. The evidence makes one fact clear. Low risk does not mean no risk. Ongoing monitoring and community preparedness remain essential for the safety of everyone living and working around Clear Lake.